Hey guys, a while back I had unboxed a dual dash cam by Z Edge. I have tested this for the past few months and now I'm ready to give you guys my review. I have previously tested quite a few other dash cams and I have to say this is probably the best one yet. Once again, if you're interested in everything that comes out of the box, I recommend you check out my unboxing video. The link will be in the description and also at the end of this video as a thumbnail. Now this is a dual set of cameras, so you have one for the front and also one for the rear. The front camera is able to record at 1440 at a maximum resolution. The rear camera is able to record at 1080p, so both of them are HD or a little bit higher than HD quality. Um, dynamic range is something that is pretty good. There are some places where I think the darks really overtake uh, the lighter areas. You can see in some of these clips that I'm just rolling through. Um, nighttime visibility is actually pretty decent, especially for the front one. The fr I'd say the front camera is definitely quite good. Rear camera kind of lacks a little bit. But for cameras that don't really have IR technology or anything more expensive, they actually have pretty decent and usable quality. You can still make out um, license plates um, just right off the bat. If you were to zoom in on the footage, you can see the license plates a little bit farther away. But uh, overall, I am pretty satisfied of the quality. Now let's go into a little bit more detail about the specifics and the practicality of this dash cam. So the reason why it took so long for me uh, between my unboxing video and now to bring out my review is I wanted to make sure that it could withstand extreme temperatures. So I live in an area where it can get as hot as 90 degrees and as cold as say 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So I definitely did able to withstand those temperatures, no problem. The battery also doesn't suffer. It is the type of dash cam where you have to plug it in um, to the car's auxiliary power source in order for it to maintain recording but it does have a finite amount of battery that it will record for maybe 10 seconds if it was cut off from its main power source just in case your car was bumped while it was parked so you can just get a couple seconds of that footage just enough so that you can file say an insurance claim if you wanted a dash cam that would be constantly recording all the time, you would have to hardwire it to your car's battery and that's definitely a much more difficult install. The install process for this one is very typical, so I had already made a how-to tutorial specifically on how I managed to hook this thing up, mount uh, both of the cameras, wire it throughout my car, there's a little bit of cable management that you have to do. The full step-by-step -step tutorial is in the description down below and also linked at the end of this video if you want to check out my video on that. But what I really like about this camera setup is that they try to make it as not proprietary as possible. So the auxiliary power um, plug that they come included in the box is just kind of a standard USB type plug so you can actually even use it to charge your phone for instance and all the cables are very standard like USB, micro USB and mini USB to connect from the front camera to the rear camera and so all of these things are easily detachable which makes it really simple for you to access your footage uh, which is stored on the front camera whenever you need to. So you can see there's kind of like a little twist and lock mechanism how the front dash cam is mounted onto the front mount. So it's very simple to remove to access your footage when you need to. And speaking of accessing the footage, it's really simple. There are two ways you can go about doing it. First of which is you can directly remove that micro SD card and then stick it into your computer slot. Or you can simply hook up the camera via micro USB directly to your computer. And then you're greeted with one single photo that says card V. And then when you open that up, you have two photos that are clearly labeled emergency and then video. The emergency photo contains all of the footage that was um, created because either the car was bumped or it sensed some loud noise so it just automatically turned on and saved that footage or you can also manually save emergency footage say a car crash right in front of you or in this case this random truck decided to jump the middle partition and just make a u-turn that way you can go ahead and press the leftmost button which is very convenient because that's the closest button to you uh, as a driver on the left side at least in the US then you can save that footage into this emergency folder so that it cannot be overridden by other footage. The other photo is called video and this is the storage of all the other footage that is not um, locked away. So this is the most recent footage that you have and then the camera will automatically um, rewrite old footage if 
just so that it can continuously be recording. You don't have to worry about dumping out old footage as your um, SD card fills up space. So the one I'm using right here is a 32 gigabyte uh, micro SD card. And you can see um, today's date is March 30th and then it goes back all the way to the 26th. So it's able to store roughly five days of footage. And now I'm not driving, you know, 10 hours a day or anything like that. But for normal commutes, um, say two, three hours a day of driving, um, it's able to store about four days of footage. So just put it that way on a 32 gigabyte um, SD card. So obviously the bigger SD card, the better. I think this is compatible up to 128 gigs, not completely sure. But I would say at least a 32 gig, if not a 16 gigabyte SD card, you should at least keep in your dash cam. And if you haven't noticed already, the way that all of the footage is labeled is first the year, then the month, then the day, then the time, and down to the second even. And then the space in between that is the number, how many footages it has been recording. And then A stands for the front camera, B is the rear camera. So that just makes it easier for you to track down which footage happened on what day if you choose to not have the date and timestamp directly on the footage is just an easy way for you to see it and i do appreciate that all of these uh, extension files are mp4 I have reviewed other dash cams that used a really weird extension that I couldn't even view the footage without reformatting but I'm glad that you don't have to do that for this dash cam on this dash cam, you can see there are five buttons right here in the front that you can use to help navigate on the on-screen menu. Um, generally, it's pretty easy to use, but the thing is, because it's always constantly trying to record, in order to access the settings, you have to make sure that it stops recording first, and that can be kind of a task. Um, you just need to play around with the buttons until you get it to stop recording, and then you can finally access the menu system, which is broken up into video. Um, recording sessions and then kind of more of these system based settings now, I don't want to make this video too long so I'm just going to kind of breeze through the menu so there you can change your resolution whether you want to be recording front and rear dash cam at the same time right now I only have my front camera uh, not hooked up to anything else it only displays the front cam you can adjust how long each video clip is right now I set it at three minutes you can choose whether to record audio or not and then there's a whole bunch of other little settings that you can tweak, but the most important stuff is probably like exposure, um, whether you want to have the startup chime and then the button chime and all that date stamp. Um, and then moving on to the actual system settings, here you can adjust kind of what you want it to send. So you want it to notify you whether when you're shooting in low light conditions. Um, this isn't super helpful just because anytime I enter say like a tunnel or a garage, it just automatically comes on. But uh, you can still have that enabled if you wanted to. and a couple other things like G-Force sensing and parking sensing, all that stuff should be enabled. Um, for G-Force sensing, I would definitely recommend that you put it on high just because it is already pretty sensitive as is. So because of this, I have actually gotten some unique emergency footage of when my car was in the maintenance shop, uh, when I was scraping off my windshield in the winter time, and even when I dropped my phone right near it when I was trying to film it for review, uh, it just automatically started to save it as an emergency footage. Now moving on to the recording screen view, um, on the very top is kind of the stuff that's already in play. So for instance, it shows you what video quality you're recording at, um, how many minutes per film, and then whether or not you're going to have audio, and then all the kind of sensing that's doing, like G-Force, parking, all that. So and then on the bottom, um, you have your arrow keys that you can use to navigate, and also the bottom screen sometimes pops up. Um, the most important part is the little hazard. Uh, symbol that comes up at the top meaning that it's going to be an emergency footage is what's going to be tagged as and you can obviously remove it at any time by pressing that left arrow key um, there is a way uh, once you can get this thing to stop recording uh, to actually view the footage right there on the device that's going to be really blurry and I don't know why you would ever want to do this but you definitely do have the option to do so and that means you can access your emergency video footages you can access your other video footages and delete them on the fly if you choose to do so you can see I have incidentally saved quite a few emergency footages so I'm going to go ahead and delete that one for instance 
and you're actually able to take photos on this thing too but i don't see anybody actually going to be using this for that purpose but again you can view all this footage like i showed you before on your computer which is much easier so guys i don't want to make this video too long as is i just want to make sure i have a nice full in-depth review so you guys know what you're getting i really do highly recommend the set i've tested so many different dash cams and this one really takes the cake in terms of durability the features and it's not super obvious that it's a dash cam either i hate those that really hang down and look really obvious that you're recording people I love the non-proprietariness of this, the flexibility and the camera lens angle mounting options. I mean, this is just a really good all-around package. So again, link is in the description so you guys can check it out for yourselves.